This week on Healthy Living, we shed a light on sickle cell disease, which affects a high number of people in Africa. Nigerian public health expert Dr. Hajar Maman Nasir discusses the challenges and progress made in the fight against sickle cell disease. And a sickle cell patient shares her inspiring story of life with the disease. Finally, we'll find out what a white tongue may reveal about your health. We'll have these stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello and thank you for joining us for another edition of Healthy Living. I'm Linoch Moudou. Sickle cell disease is an inherited blood disorder that affects red blood cells. The condition is characterized by abnormally shaped red blood cells and can cause anemia, severe pain, infections and organ damage. The sickle cells block blood flow leading to episodes of severe pain. Global data reveal that people of African, Middle Eastern, and South Asian descent are more at risk. As many as 25% of the people in West and Central Africa have sickle cell trait. We start in Uganda, where sickle cell disease is a challenge in rural areas where the condition remains poorly understood, according to experts. In one of the hot spots for sickle cell in eastern Uganda, a young woman living with the disease is ramping up efforts to educate and counsel communities. Barbara Nabulo spends time at Mbale Regional Referral Hospital in eastern Uganda. She talks to caregivers and patients, mostly children, who have been rushed here for medical emergencies after a sickle cell crisis. As a sickle cell sufferer herself, Nabulo knows all too well what these people are going through. They never thought of me as an important thing, like someone who would grow up or someone who is supposed to get an education, because they used to tell my mother that people like me don't grow, we can't go to school, and we don't produce children. So as a child, my mother looked after me, and when I was 12 years old, she would put me in a taxi from our village, and she would tell me to go to the clinic, and I would get medicine that the doctor would have prescribed. Her mother, Agata Nambuya, remembers her daughter's head and limbs swelling up just two weeks after her birth. They change the blood. After that, you see the child swelling, swelling. And he feel everywhere pain. And he can cry all the time. And that what I saw that time. All the time I have been in the hospital. Nabulo's mother says she is proud of her daughter's three children and her work as a counselor. Encouraged by hospital authorities, Nabulo joins health workers to raise awareness and advocate for testing children for sickle cell as early as possible. Dr. Julian Abeso is the head of pediatrics at the Mbale Regional Referral Hospital and a researcher on sickle cell disease. On average, most of these children will start uh, falling sick between the ages of six to eight months. So by the time the child reaches, let's say, 10 years, the child will have been admitted several times if we do not give uh, some of these preventive uh, drugs. The Mbale Referral Hospital looks after hundreds of patients arriving from nearby villages to pick up medication. Many receive doses of hydroxyurea, a drug that can reduce periods of severe pain and other complications. It's a, I would say, a wonder drug. It has changed the course of, of, of managing children with sickle cell. We used to be so frustrated, you know? You care for a child, then they reach like 12 years, and they get so many complications, and even you, you start wishing and saying, this, this child, so because of that trauma, eh, hydroxyurea has now changed it. 
like it improves on the what on the quality of life of these patients one of dr abeso's patients is john elungat who at 23 looks younger due to stunted growth before he was two years back he was falling sick falling sick but we didn't know which disease is that so when we confirmed when he was two years in our then from there we started struggling and began struggling up to now. Sickle cell disease, which can stunt physical growth, is more common in malaria-prone regions, notably Africa and India. The World Health Organization estimates that the prevalence of sickle cell anemia is as high as 45% in some parts of Uganda. For more on sickle cell disease, we spoke with Dr. Hajar Maman Nasir, a public health expert in Abuja, Nigeria. Here is what he has to say about the incidence and management of the condition in Africa. Sickle cell disease is um, an inherited blood disorder where there is a defect in the hemoglobin. First of all, um, oxygen is needed for our body to function properly. And a hemoglobin is the vehicle that carries this oxygen within the body. Sub-Saharan Africa um, has the highest burden of sickle cell all within Africa, and Nigeria has the highest sickle cell cases in the entire world, where every year babies that are born, 150,000 to 200,000 babies have the sickle cell disease. The blood cells usually, the red blood cells, they are round and they are flexible so that way blood is able to flow within the body freely and execute its function. But in sickle cell disease, what happens here is this, um, sickle cell, um, the, the blood cells become rigid, they become sticky, and then they take on, instead of the round normal shape of the red blood cells, they become sickle-shaped sickle or um, crescent moon-shaped, hence the name sickle cell disease. So because of this shape, the blood um, breaks down easily. Usually the, um, the life cycle of a normal red blood cell is 120 days within the body. But in the case of a sickle cell disease, it's um, one one to 10 to 20 days. And then these blood cells, they break down easily. They block blood vessels and lead to a lot of problems within the body like organ damage and organs that are most especially affected are the liver, the kidneys, the spleen, and sometimes the eyes. The treatment options vary. Usually it's pain management because like I mentioned earlier, they go through a lot of pain, pain crisis. So pain management is the um, first thing. Currently the, the permanent cure for, um, and the only cure for sickle cell disease is um, cell, um, stem cell transplantation or something that people know as bone marrow transplantation. The proper infrastructure has to be put in place for this, even when they become readily available to be executed. And education and awareness needs to be highly enforced so that people would actually become more aware of the disease and know what the disease is about and to encourage testing so that people would know their status. Do you know someone who suffers from sickle cell disease and do you think there is enough awareness about the condition in your community? Here are some reactions from Facebook. Shigolile Erasto from Tanzania says, the problem is serious and the victims of this problem suffer a lot because every day they have to use folic acid. They are certainly facing serious challenges in treatment. We urge governments in these countries to help these people. Jonathan Gabriel Jab from Bukavu DRC writes, I don't know very well about sickle cell disease and I would like to know how it spreads from person to person because in Congo there are many patients. And finally, Dominique Vanjala Wekesa from Tanzania writes, Health professionals tell people that many have lost loved ones through this disease. Education should also include explaining whether there is research being done to find a cure. The community should also work well with health professionals to learn about genetic diseases like this that contribute to the death of our loved ones. 
Mayrama Ndimi is a UK-based Nigerian mother who was born with sickle cell. Growing up with the disease, she faced several health challenges. She shares her experience of life with sickle cell and what it takes every day to live a productive life. Um, sickle cell is a, a quite a common illness that affects, according to the Sickle Cell Society, one in four West Africans and one in ten Afro-Caribbeans. For me personally, it affects my day-to-day -day, um, in everything I, I do. Let's say the the normal able-bodied person operates at about a hundred percent capacity every day. My hundred percent is probably there. Fifty percent, I get fatigued quite easily. Um, I'm in. There's a constant humming of pain, background pain. The most challenging aspects of, of living with sickle cell is that it's very much well it, it can be in in my experience an invisible disability a lot of people wouldn't know by looking at me that i um i'm affected by it every day um so i guess um getting a level of understanding from other people um now is, is what i find most challenging i am currently and i've been for a long time um on a an exchange transfusion program that's when they um they take your blood probably around 60 to 70 percent of it um take it out and then they transfuse you with new donated blood and um that's uh something that i do every month and that has enabled me to to thrive in in, in my own way. And also, um, you have your regular um, medication that you take on a daily basis. And um, should you wish to have a child, I don't think that having sickle cell should be um, seen as a, a barrier to that. I think that you just have to really listen to your body. No. Um, your and listen to how much energy you have know what you can do because at the end of the day your child does come first so you have to really really take care of yourself and make sure your health is at the its optimum level so that you can be there to um, provide the best uh, support and care for your child also it's not a stigma a lot of people in africa view having sickle cell as a stigma and really it isn't it, it shouldn't stop you from getting married to who, whoever it is that you want to get married to or to be with whoever it is that you want to be with be aware of how it can affect you how it can affect your choices going forward whether you choose to have kids or not um but anything is possible and um just take care of yourself and listen to your body Did you know that everyone has a unique tongue print? Just like fingerprints, our tongues have special identifying marks. A healthy tongue is pink in color. A white film may appear on your tongue when bacteria and food are caught between the tiny bumps on your tongue's surface called papillae. The papillae may swell and become inflamed. According to experts at US-based Cleveland Clinic, this buildup often causes bad breath and can leave a bad taste in your mouth. If your tongue color is white or a color other than pink, it could mean you have an underlying health condition. A white tongue can also be a result of various habits such as poor oral hygiene, smoking, drinking alcohol, or taking antibiotics. To get rid of a white tongue, practice good oral hygiene and drink plenty of fluids. Experts say usually white tongue goes away without treatment within a few weeks. Do consult a medical professional if your white tongue lasts longer. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on X at Linoch Mudu. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.